poor Myron. He was a chump. For the past 23 years, he had led a fairly non-existent life. There had never been a bigger loser, and there probably never will be. He was the ultimate failure. During his formative years, he had a rough time. As he grew up, Myron had to withstand the tormenting of his eight brothers and sisters. his only true friend being his cardboard dog, Bitsy. Due to an unknown psychological blemish, Myron spent his entire life being attracted to cardboard animals. Myron's family continued teasing him, so as a result, he spent most of his time locked up in the hall closet studying his math books. Finally, after two years of college, three years of business management courses, and untold weeks of inner torment, Myron had found his niche in society as a salesman of Woolworth's electronics section. Each morning, the alarm clock was set to go off at 723. After taking a shower and invariably bumping his head on the glass door, For breakfast, Myron rolled up a slice of Wonder Bread into a small white ball and washed it down with some coffee. He left some food for the 
cat. What? No caviar? And where's my finger bowl? And then Myron ran for the bus. What followed was eight hours of boredom and hostile customers. After punching out at five o'clock and missing the 459 bus, Myron would walk the 19 and a half blocks home. You are. It's high time you arrived, you inconsiderate slump. I suppose you think you can leave me here by myself all day without any nourishment, either physical or cultural, to keep me going. I feel like a prisoner out of some Edgar Allan Poe Gothic. The way I'm treated here, I really don't know why I stay. I mean, I really don't like the environment here. It is so hostile. And besides, you are such a bore. Well, anyway, I am quite famished. So would you please prepare my supper this instant? I have set out all the necessary herbs and spices required for tonight's meal. Oh. And I would like to be served... Uh, let me see. Under the drawing room table tonight? 
If you don't mind, I can distinctly hear my stomach growling. If you've forgotten, uh, the kitchen is that way. <laughs> could sneak up and claw him as soon as he was asleep. <laughs> One morning, Myron walked into Woolworth's back office and found the entire staff in tears. He strolled over to Gladys, whose sobbing had made her green mascara run. Oh, Myron, it's Mr. Wingley, the assistant manager. Oh. He was gunned down last night in the lobby of the Jolly Roger. By now, her mascara had mixed with her lipstick to create a pathetic yuletide smear across her face. And Myron, the worst of it is, for the new assistant manager, they picked you! Myron was elated. He saw this miraculous occasion as a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to make something of his miserable life. Who knew what advances might come his way as a result of this promotion? After punching out and missing the bus, Myron decided that his new rank would provide him with enough extra revenue so he could purchase a replacement for his old tweed jacket and pants. Salon. He hadn't been to one of those type of places since he was a kid. However, today was special. dynamite and the polyester was as good as polyester gets but something was missing of course the shades
Myron knew that this was the day he had always waited for. He was going to go back to Woolworths, march up to Gladys and ask her the big question. He was sure that she had recovered from her little breakdown that morning. So what could possibly go wrong? Look, I don't know how we're doing this. We aren't paid anything. She expects us to do all this work. I want a cup of coffee. Got it. Gladys? working all day. I don't want to do this thing. You? Like? Go out? On? Date! Myron, we can all see right through you. As Oscar Wilde so aptly put it, to be in society is merely a bore, but to be out of it is simply a tragedy. T H E E N D.